Elon Musk teases X app. Check it out. That will do everything after he closes Twitter deal. Pay attention. That will do what? Everything. I don't think that's hyperbole. Not for a second. I take this man very seriously. He doesn't joke around much. Everything. An app that can do everything. Public health, finances, labor force, food, everything through your X app. But only under one, one very, very important string attached. We need your identity. We need to authenticate all human beings. All human beings need to be authenticated through your identity, which will require dun, da, 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 biometric biobehavioral data. Now, 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 let's go to the next. We're moving here. We got, let's see, let's check it out. Let's see where we are. Relaxment. We did relaxment engineering the new right. We covered those. Do you smell what Musk is cooking? Do you smell it? Musk? Do you smell the Musk? Do you smell it? Do you smell what Musk is cooking? It's a legitimate question. Because I don't think enough people do smell it. I smell it. It's all about. It's all about. Check it. Elon Musk suggests Twitter changes, including authentication check mark. This is why he will be pushing authentication big time. Because this, this is the introduction to the full on digital ID that will also have social credit systems, carbon tracking, biometric readers, and of course, injection verification. When needed, when needed. Elon Musk wants to authenticate every Twitter user. Crypto Twitter should take notice. Now, again, he's going to have to slip this in slowly. He's not going to come out and be like, we're going to need your biometrics. <laughs> we're going to need some type of bio data. He ain't going to come out like that. He'll come out with something like your phone number or, and they kind of already do that, but he'll find some way to make it, you know, acceptable because it's about diffusion. And you can't diffuse a technology into a society until it's accepted by the population. Hence, trust and compliance. Hence, the push for safety and security. They have to coax you. They have to convince you that you want this. You want this in your life because of this and that. You want this, right? Nah, we don't want it nothing to do with it bro and you got all these crypto bros all of these internet guys out here pushing this tesla just wait i'm gonna get into it i'm i mean we we, we just getting into it man Let me... all right man let's go let's go all right so part of authentication is the elimination of privacy that's already happening privacy is almost an old idea at this point but I'm talking about full transparency. That's what comes with digitization. That's what comes with automation. That co that's what comes with, with, with digit, with a spatial web, sorry. S that's what comes with the spatial web because everything is virtual such that you're going to need, you're going to need transparency such that you can trust transactions. It is my belief, this is why they're pushing crypto so hard because they're trying to build the, transic the transaction infrastructure. And part of that transaction infrastructure in order not for it just to work, but for people to use it alone, just to get people to merely use this stuff. There has to be some high quality security because people don't trust. They don't want to get robbed. They don't want to lose money. They don't want to get scammed. Hence, scamming being one of the shoe ins here. Everything's going to be about, uh oh, look out for scams, look out for bots, look out for hackers. We're going to have to make sure we have proper, transparent authentication. Part of that is giving up autonomy, giving up sovereignty, giving up privacy. How about an example of that? BIS Innovation Hub Director Cecilia Skingsley, right? Straight from the horse's mouth. 
I just bring the receipts, man. So uh, I, I think uh, what we just heard from Bo about uh, credit scoring uh, uh, is a very good example, I think, of uh, that different countries has to uh, take different journeys to uh, a, a new kind of world where they serve their society in the best possible way in the, in the digital space. Uh, other countries might kind of find this uh, uh, not the way to go forward. So we all have different preferences. And, and this uh, preference on, on privacy or anonymity is, um, is tricky. Uh, a lot of people I meet, and I've spoken about this for years now, says that they don't want to have their payments uh, um, kind of distributed among commerce. But they're very happy to have a lot of CCTV cameras because they find it's worth to give up a little bit of privacy to get security, etc. So I think uh, bottom line is every country has to, to, to look into this from their own particular sp perspective. What, what is the current state? Where do they want to move it? Uh, and it differs very much if you were working in an emerging economy versus um, um, an advanced economy and depending also how financially included people actually are. So, Oh, yeah, you're just, you know, we're just going to have to give up a little privacy in order to maintain a proper level of security. That's just a part of the process. See, no, it ain't a little privacy. It's full transparency. Now. Now, let's watch a clip of Elon Musk and let's dissect his ideas. Let's dissect his perspectives, okay? But this clip is perfect to get a real perspective of the transhumanist. Let's not even talk about Musk as a person. Let's not even talk about the personality, him as a specific subject. I'm not concerned with him. He's probably a cool dude when it comes to just hanging out, maybe having a beer and just, you know, talking about strange and odd things probably pretty interesting of a, of a character for that kind of experience i'm not talking about that i'm talking about his ideas his goals and his motivations what does he appeal to what grounds his desires in life what grounds his innovation innovative ideas right that's what i want to know uh i guess the the, the law why you do whatever you do you want to go to places that nobody been. You are reinventing a certain industry from the rocket industry with SpaceX to the car industry with Tesla. What's your oh, by the way, just uh, so you guys know where this is from. This is from 2017. So I, I went back a little bit just so we can get some early Musk because he's he's smoking right now, right? He's smoking. Let's go back in you know, a little bit before he was where he is and see what he was thinking then. So we have a much clearer understanding of where he's at now and what he's really trying to do. OK, because and it doesn't seem as if his ideas or mind has changed much since this. This was 2017. Um, this is the world, the world government summit. Mission in life. Why you do whatever you do? Uh, sure. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. Why do you do what you do? Real, really important question. We're going we're gonna to dissect what he says. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, and um, we're having a really, really great time uh, with me, my kids in, in Dubai. It's really been fantastic. I'd really encourage anyone who hasn't been to, to visit. Uh, what, a, what a great city. Thank you. Uh, and um, in terms of the motivations, uh, I guess the, the, the long, this sort of uh, kind of a long version of the explanation, but uh, it, essentially, the, when, when I was a kid, I was wondering kind of what's the meaning of life? Like, why are we here? What's it all about? And um, I came to the conclusion that uh, what, what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask. And th the more that we can increase the scope and scale of uh, human consciousness, the better we are able to ask these questions. And I'm going to try not to cut it. I'm going to let it play. Scale human consciousness, guys. Human consciousness. That's, you already know, okay? So, so I think that there's certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good. Um, and uh, some of those things are, in the long term, having long-term sustainable transport and sustainable energy generation. Um, and uh, to be a space-bearing civilization, 
and for humanity to be out there among the stars and be a multiplanetary uh, species. Um, I mean, I think the being a multiplanet species and being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity, and uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Uh, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure, and it makes people excited about the future. Um, and if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's... Is, that's why we get up in the morning, right, guys? No, this is... I'm sorry. This is the ridiculousness of the transhumanists. This is how they perceive joy. This is how they perceive, like... Uh, the, the meaning and purpose of life. I get up in the morning because I know I'm going to be able to be a multi-planetary species and, and live on Mars after I take a fat crap on the earth that I lived on prior. See, that's why I get up in the morning. I don't know about y'all. That's the point. There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. So what is life for you? I mean, you look at our life, and I heard you before speaking. Is this a dream? Is it is life a real? Dream? Is it a million D? What is life for Elon Musk? I find as, as I get older, I find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games. You know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. Come on, guys. What's his first reference to what's the meaning of life? The dude says he, he references a damn video game. A video game. He's not Gen Z either. You see how these people think? He references a video game for such a, an important question, man. The question of questions. You know, well, it's, it's like a video game. Really, because... That's how he sees life, through the lens of a computer screen. ...or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games. You know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot, you know, like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like me too, exactly. That's I played Pong. <laughs> exactly, it sort of dates you a little bit. But yeah, we, we both played the same game. Um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously. And, um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality um, and augmented reality. And if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then... Look at how he says it. And look at how he's looking at him. He's like, bro, that's kind of weird. You're excited about that? That's what makes life worth living? That's the meaning of life? To, to slowly destroy it such that it becomes a video game? And the video game so advanced that you can't tell it isn't real because you hate reality. You hate the material world. You hate people. You hate mankind. You hate nature. You hate God. That's why you want to escape and you want to like live in this weird computer graphic bit based world of literal madness. I'm sorry. I need to chill out. I need to calm down because, you know, these guys just get under your skin a little bit. man. It seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past and that we're not in one of those games ourselves? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, maybe we're in a simulation. How do you know? Who knows? Could be. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, particularly like things seem to be accelerating to some, to something. Isn't it? I mean, if, if we look at our life, it seems in the past 100 years, life been accelerating quite fast. Yeah. In the past 20, it's much getting faster. faster and faster. Is it more slow? So my question is really, 
how life will be in Earth 20, 30, 50 years from now, our education, mm -hmm. our transport. How do you see it? Well, I think this is one of those things that's quite difficult to predict. Um, I mean, you think of... Hold on, guys. I, gotta, I, had, I had some things written here I wanted to say before we keep going, because this is, it's, you got to admit, it's almost mind-blowing, right? Like, this perspective, this worldview, that's why we study these things. These are the guys shaping the future of you and I's world, our experiences. This is the guy. You see all these big YouTubers and influencers on social media and politicians saying, oh, what a great guy. This is how he sees the world. Or should we say how he doesn't see the world? Because he doesn't see the world. He has like imaginative ideas of what could possibly be outside of it. That's even worse because he's not addressing reality for what it is. He wants something different. He wants something else. He's looking elsewhere instead of here. You're asking him a question about here, but he's thinking and looking elsewhere. Nowhere. So, adventurous narrative. He says, we need to have an adventurous narrative. You know what he meant by adventurous narrative to life? Think about narrative and adventure. I think of like Pokemon Go. I think of video games. I think of anime. I think of fantasy. Right? Adventure and narrative. Detached. He's detached from reality. From the human population too. Because he's a billionaire. This dude don't know people. Do you think he really knows anything about people? He knows a whole lot about technology. Sure. Oh, sure. You don't know spit about people. Period. Yet he's guiding the future of human communication. Huh? How can you authenticate a human when you don't know what a human is? Player one. There we go. That's another one. Life, he says. Life, analogous to a video game. Fantasy. His feet are not on the ground. They're not. Void, in his response, it really just equated life to a video game or the potential of turning life into a very good, believable video game, because that's all he said. So his perspective of life, life what, what, what was it devoid of? It was devoid of purpose. It was devoid of transcendental meaning. It was literally limited to that which a computer can produce, that which only mere data can represent. There was nothing human, nothing human in his response, guys. Life as merely a vehicle. This is how he sees life. Not to procreate, not to communicate, not to enjoy, and to bask in. Not to experience physically, materially. But life as merely a vehicle for the marvel of technological development. Techno-fantasy. Devoid of humanness. A boy in his video games. Life is a subjective reality that you can build for yourself in the metaverse. That was the subtext of his message. He's got nine kids. Are you kidding me? Goodness gracious. They're, they must have a nanny of sorts. Wouldn't be surprised if it was a damn robot. What was the nanny robot in Jetsons? What was her name? Goodness. Somebody's going to say it in there. What was her name? Damn. It escapes me. But you y'all know what I'm getting at. So I think it started with an M. I don't know. Somebody's gonna say it here. Robots don't need nannies. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. He's a woman. Yeah, hey. Wouldn't be surprised. For a second. I wouldn't be surprised at all if any of these people were not what they say. Betsy, there we go, it was a B, not an M. Betsy or Nancy? Not oh no, Betsy. Rosie, not Betsy, Rosie. There we go, an R. Rosie. Daisy, <laughs> Betsy, Daisy, close, right? We're all kind of like, yeah, Rosie. I think it was Rosie. She was actually really cool. I think she might have been my favorite character on the show, actually. actually. I, no, I liked uh, the son. What was his name? 
goodness. That was old school stuff, man. Uh, what was the son's name? Not Mackenzie. Leroy. Yeah, Leroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Anyhow, predictive programming, right? Um, a boy and his video games. Life is a subjective fantasy. All right, now let's go to 1730. Automation, right? Let's go. Uh, so the timing seems to be good to uh, really make uh, a significant uh, debut in this region starting in Elroy. That's what it was, uh, Elroy. Okay, not Leroy, Leroy. Elroy. Leroy was the new Flash Dragon. Okay. thing that will come in technology next. What's next in technology? What's next in technology? That will disturb the way we live, the way we think, the way we do business. Well, the, 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 the most near-term uh, impact from a technology standpoint is autonomous cars, like fully self-driving cars. Um, like I said, that's going to be, that's going to happen much faster than people realize. Um, so, and, and that, it's going to be a great convenience to be an autonomous car, but there are many people whose jobs it is to drive. Yeah, a great convenience getting smashed headfirst into a brick wall, possibly. Yeah, you know. Oh, we got to tweak the algorithm. Looks like Johnny got his head taken off again. Anyhow, I, I want to keep this moving. He, he talks about automation, and I showed you a couple shows ago how he's already released through the Pepsi Corporation his first electronic delivery truck, which eventually will be automated by way of onboard AI. So, of course, they start with the electric vehicle and then uh, uh, adjust it such that it now can be automated through a type of AI. And you know, all the cars have computers in them now. So all you got to do is put AI algorithms in them, you know, make them AI uh, compatible. And there you go. You have an automated vehicle. First, you get the electric vehicle. Then you put the AI brain in it. And he's actually going to do the same thing with his robot. I know a lot of people are making fun of his robot. It's like, oh, you know, robots been around. That's just that's not, that's no different from what Honda did. Nah, <laughs> not this one. It's much different. When you see the AI tech that they they were about to put in it as a brain, they've already done uh, brain. We're, we're, we have a whole show on AI coming, so I won't I won't you know ruin any of it. But trust me, man, these guys are these guys are witches, witches, man, witches with the witches brew. Let's go to twenty where he talks about AI. So in 2017, he was already talking about electronic vehicle or electric vehicles as well as automated vehicles. His belief is electric vehicles will take a lot longer. Okay, yeah, Astro was awesome too. The dog, he was awesome. I love dogs. Um, so he he was he's basically saying just to save time. He's basically saying, oh, electronic vehicles are electric vehicles are going to take a lot longer to be normalized. Uh, hence the big push right now we're seeing because they're trying to really push us into this because they know how long it's going to take for infrastructure, for development, manufacturing. They know how long it's going to take. So they're really, really twisting our arms to speed up the process acceleration, right? But what he says, he says, uh, yeah, you know, electric vehicles as a normal state of transport for the general population might take up to 20 years. But automated vehicles will be here in the next five to 10 years. And we'll probably most likely see them through certain institutions, say education with automated vehicles, transport for students, as well as automated transport for some labor forces, possibly. Uh, and definitely for entertainment. I think entertainment, uh, electronic vehicles, automated, electro uh, automated vehicles for entertainment, uh, like gaming, like, you know, Similar to how we have public transport, we'll see a new version of that through uh, automated public transport. I think that might be an early form of this. And there's already evidence of that, which we've looked at in the past. So we already actually know that. Now, let's look at automated automation or artificial intelligence. This is important. All right. Um, employment. So that, that disruption I'm talking about will take place over about 20 years. But still, 20 years is a short period of time to have, I think, something like 12 to 15 percent of the workforce be unemployed. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is the largest. And so, then we need to figure out new roles for, for what, what you know, what do those people do? Uh, that will disturb the way we live, the way we think, the way we do business. Well, the the, the most near-term 
uh, impact from a technology standpoint is autonomous cars, like fully self-driving cars. Um, like I said, that's going to be that's going to happen much faster than people realize. Um, so, and that it's going to be a great convenience to be an autonomous car, but there are many people whose jobs it is to drive. So if, if um, uh, in fact, I think it might be the single largest employer uh, of people is dri driving uh, in various forms. And so then we need to figure out new roles for, for what, what, you know, what do those people do. Um, but, it, but it will be very disruptive and very quick. Now, I, I should count um, employment. So that, that disruption I'm talking about will take place over about 20 years. But still, 20 years is a short period of time to have, I think, something like 12 to 15 percent of the workforce be unemployed. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is the largest global government summit. We have over 139 government here. If you want to advise government officials to be ready for the future, what is three things or three advice you'll give them? Well, I think. The, the first bit of advice would be to really pay, pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. Um, I think this is, we need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of. He's, he's spot on there. Now let's think about the last couple of years. What scientists did, what experts did, say with certain types of genetic therapies, did they have any type of caution? Absolutely not. So this is lip service. You know, we just have to, he's, he's always pushing the fear. And the reason he pushed, I personally believe, the reason he pushes fear of AI, well, in part, for one, he knows that there will be little caution. Caution will be thrown to the wind. It's about markets, it's, it's about technological development, and more importantly, it's about control and surveillance. So they're only going to be looking at those things. They're not going to be looking at the fallout, right? That's one part. The other part is he wants to, he's trying to sell, sell the idea of merging with machine through singularity by digital convergence. So he's going to have to prop up, or should I say, he's going to have to really exaggerate the negative potential of AI such that we'll feel as if we have to merge with it. Otherwise, we'll be eaten up. You know what I mean? Let's continue. Of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. Um, let's see. Secondly, I would say um, we, we do need to think about transport in general. Um, and uh, there's, there's the movement towards uh, electric vehicles, um, sustainable transport. Um, that, I think that's going to be you know, good for, for, for many reasons, but again, not something that happens immediately. That'll happen slower than the uh, self-driving vehicles. So that's Are drones AI? Drone, AI is a process. AI is a, is a type of computer uh, pattern recognition process or I, I, I guess, yeah, it's like a, it's a Pattern recognition microprocess. So basically, you could put AI in almost anything. Anything with, uh, say, anything chippable, <laughs> right? And there's the whole computer chip problem we have that I won't have time to go in today with China and everything. I wanted to touch on that. We won't have time. I might have to do a special show on that. But there's a chip war now. And this is all by design. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to share some of these views I have because, like, they're really pushing this. It's all about acceleration, accelerating everything through crisis. And the thing is, we're the ones that suffer. You know, our systems fail. We have to carry all the burden. So they could say, oh, well, everything sucks, guys. Looks like we're going to have to rebuild everything with AI, right? So you could easily put AI into, you could very easily put AI into uh, a drone. Very easily, right? Uh, we, we got a whole bunch of AI stuff coming, man. A whole bunch of, bunch of stuff coming. Uh, hold on. There we go. Okay, I just want to make sure this is still working. All right, let's... Uh, he talks about electrification next here. So I'm showing you this as predictive programming for what we're seeing now. Here in 2017, he was talking about automation, AI, electric cars, everything we're hearing now, everything we're hearing now politically. So he's part of the engineer group, the brain group, the thinking group, the think tank, and also culture influence. Um, 
so he's going to talk about electrification and that has to do with everything we're seeing now with the circular economy and carbon and getting rid of fossil fuels and you know because they want to electrify everything because everything it will be functioning through chips everything will be computerized that's probably something that happens 30 or 40 years the transition to electric vehicles um, so thinking about that in, in context, um, the demand for electricity will increase dramatically. Um, so currently, in terms of total energy usage in the world, it's about one-third electricity, about one-third transport, about one-third heating. Um, so at, over time, that will transition to almost all, not, not all, but predominantly electricity, which means that the demand for electricity will probably triple. Um, so it's going to be very important to think about how do you make so much more electricity. Um, and um, That's the biggest issue. How do we make more electricity? Because everything is going to be ran, ran through electricity. And mainly chips. Like the whole chip thing is because the chips are going to be what controls the infrastructure for biotech, for spatial web, for metaverse, um, for the grid system, right? All of these things are going to be functioning on a, a elect electronic chips and computer, uh, whether it be software or hardware, right? So everything is about electrification. Everything. That's that's. The, I'm gonna tell you guys, no conspiracy is needed. It's all facts here. It's all blatant. That's the only reason we're going through this environmental issue. It's not because of the climate is changing. It's not because we're harming the the environment. Wait till you see how much harm these types of technologies will cause on the environment that, that already exists. This, it has nothing to do with any of, the, of those things. It's about transitioning into a new digitized world where everything is connected. Everything is centralized. They try to sell this decentralized concept to, to appeal and appeal to and appease the libertarians. But see, they're falling right into the hole. And me, I'm very libertarian in many ways myself. So I get that perspective. But look, you got to know where this stuff is going. You have to follow the logic, the computer logic, the, the technological logic, right? You have to follow it, but also you have to follow the funding. You have to follow the money, and you have to see who's in control, right? What, what is this stuff being built up for? It's not being built up for freedom, decentralized freedom, liberty. We're going to have to figure that on our, out on our own. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to survive. Clearly, what the good thing is it's just getting started it's so infantile right now it's cr it's hardly crawling that's why we have so much psyops that's why you have such so social engineering and propaganda and an and orchestrated crisis because they're trying to speed things up the good thing is we know they're far behind and they're getting they're they're itching they're they're sweating they're you know they're running out of time so they're pushing right the good thing is they're nowhere near where they want to be all right, some of the tech is pretty advanced. Robotics is crazy. AI is pretty advanced. Uh, the, the most advanced thing is, I'd say, definitely graphics, visual graphics, deep fakes. All of those types of things are pretty, pretty advanced. Uh, like, quote unquote, Bluebeam, which is probably a defunct program. But the technology for Bluebeam is like on a level we couldn't even imagine. Um, but as far as AI, what they really want is AGI, artificial general intelligence. They're nowhere near that. I'm, I have a bunch of papers. We're going to eventually get there. But this is they're so far so for me it's i'm very optimistic surprisingly about a lot of this because it's a lot of fluff it's it's a lot of exaggeration and embellishment and uh, techno fantasy with a bunch of designer fallacies so personally like i know they will fail in in that it will not be what they're telling us it will be but it will be a surveillance state there will be requirements there will be a biosecurity state for sure but I don't, I, I don't think it's going to be the way they want. And there's going to be loopholes. There's going to, there's going to be so many ways that we can rig things. I personally believe, just based on human innovation and and, and human and, and human creativity, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure of it. Just based on the God's creation alone, we're brilliant. We're far more brilliant in many nuanced and metaphysical ways that a computer, that a machine, could never reproduce ever. So I'm, I'm, I have no fear in any of this. I'm only exposing it to present the ridiculous, fantastical nature of it. 
it's like some little kid with a video game or, or some obsession with comic books. It's, it's that level. The problem is these guys got mad money, filthy rich, very influential, power. They have power. That's the problem. Seem they had an easy job. That's, that's it. There's more, no more challenges for them. Um, no, well, then I, I think maybe the, the, these, these things do play into each other a little bit. But what to do about mass unemployment? This is going to be a massive social challenge. Now, this will be a reality for sure. This will be one aspect of all of this that will happen. Uh, mass employment and also probably food shortages and, and fuel energy shortages. But those all will be by design. That's the problem. It's not organic. It's not natural. They will be by design because it's part of the reconstruction right? Deconstruct to reconstruct, break down to build back. But we will figure out a way to survive. You better believe it. All praises to the most high. I'm not worried about a damn thing, okay? Because he got all things covered. Um, and I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic Un income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So there it is. Let me run it back. Um, and I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic Un income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So it means that unemployed people will be paid across the globe. Yeah. Because there is no job. Machine robot is taking over. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. Um, that, that's simply the, the uh, and I want to be clear that these, th these are not uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are think, simply things that I think probably will happen. Um, and since, and if, they, if, if, if my assessment is correct and they probably will happen, then we need to say, what are we going to do about it? And I think some kind of a universal basic income is going to be necessary. Um, now, the output, the output of goods and services will be extremely high. Um, so with automation, um, they, will, they will come abundance. Um, there will be, uh, almost everything will get very cheap. Um, the, uh, it's, so it's, uh, I think the, the biggest, I think we'll just end up doing uh, universal basic income. It's gonna because full mar complete markets will be changing. Things will be very cheap, but more importantly, there will be digital products. See, that's, he's not really saying it, but we're moving from a, a type of material, brick and mortar goods and services to knowledge services, to cultural services, as David Bell would say. Uh, these, Dan, Daniel Bell, sorry. Uh, these, what these services, they're virtual services. They're virtual experiences. So we will be experiencing more virtual, digital things than physical things. But physical things will be cheap too because there will be less demand for them, right? And complete industries are going to be changing such that our whole, our whole fabric of, of, of market experience, et cetera, will be changing, will be different. In many cases, and this is down the line, I don't, I don't see this happening tomorrow or even in 10 years, but that essentially we won't have to work. Uh, housing will most likely be free. And the thing, the younger generations will really love this. Housing will be free in many cases. Uh, you won't have to work. You'll, you'll literally be paid to play video games and to give behavioral data. That's how people are going to make a living through behavioral data and the behavioral data will be used to to train the ai that's automating the entire industries see very similar to black mirror in the 15 million merits uh episode <laughs> like that like that's what they're moving towards again i don't see this actually working out just because it's just too crazy it doesn't make any sense um but people won't a lot won't have to work <laughs> it's, it's going to be a completely different paradigm, unlike anything we've ever experienced in our lives, right? So a lot of it will sound good to people because imagine I don't got to work. All I got to do is I get to stay home and entertain myself to death. I get to stay home and surf the internet and play video games and watch movies and watch so shows and I'm paid for it because I'm paid for my attention. See, I'm paid for my attention to many, especially the younger generations. They're already doing it. What do you think social media is? Look at these gaming streamers. Look at these streamers that just play video games and talk. It's, they're already doing it. They're already doing it. So 
I could, I could def I could definitely see it, it at least uh, happening to some extent, right? How's it going to look? We don't really know. No life, yeah. That's that's not living, guys. That's not living. We're already prepared for it psychologically, right? We're already prepared for it. And all the young kids, man, they're just being walked off a cliff. Yes, uh, the conservative racer. We can't talk about AI without addressing the spiritual aspect. Yeah, it's it's very real. It's it's extremely esoteric, and it's hard to really like accurately pinpoint. But I definitely agree. There, I think there will be because AI doesn't exist in, in the general sense. AGI, uh, artificial general intelligence, because that's our goal. It doesn't exist yet. But I personally believe you're right. Once they do, a, a, once once they do accomplish some level of AGI. There will be spirits in it. I mean, goodness, it just makes sense, right? It, it totally makes sense to me, you know. It totally. We used to have like keyboards that we'd use a lot. Now we do most of our input through our thumbs um, on a phone, and that's just very slow. A computer can communicate at a trillion bits per second, but your thumb can maybe do, I don't know, ten bits per second or hundred if you're being generous. Um, so some ha high bandwidth interface to the brain, I think, will be something that uh, helps achieve a symbiosis and between human and machine intelligence and maybe solves the control problem and the usefulness problem. The usefulness problem. He's referring to the Harari concept of humans will be useless. We won't need you. So he's like, well, salt. See, again, primary action solution. They got different solutions for each side. We're going to solve the problem of humanness, right? Because automation kind of negates humanness. We're going to solve the problem of humans being here and present, not only by farming data, right? But also we're going to merge with merge human with machine so that we can solve all the problems. And we start to what? Technokinesis. We merge with the machine such that we can wield the technology as it's part of us, see? Technokinesis. That's a perfect example of that. Biodigital convergence. He says, man and machine symbiosis. See, you guys? This is Elon Musk. Do you hear what he's saying? These are his goals for the future. This is how he plans on fixing the human problem, the cultural issues. Computers, AI technology. And you do understand, in order for that to be a reality, in order to merge with the machine, two things. One, disembodiment. Two, the loss, the relinquishing of bodily autonomy. Your body is no longer autonomous once it is hooked up and connected to the internet, i.e. internet of bodies. Yeah, man, submission. Yep, submit to the machine. That's all he wants. That, that's his conclusion, that's his solution. To, to all the problems that AI uh, and and a digitization pose. Let's see, payments UBI. Now he's talking about he's talking about UBI, right? He's, he says it's inevitable. Yes, MOTB, Liz Parker. In my view, as a as a man of the faith, as a man of God, I personally believe all of this, all of this is leading to the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast will the Internet of Bodies will present the mark of the beast. I personally believe, and I personally believe, and, and I don't know, right? I don't know. Okay, I'm not saying I'm right here. I'm this is just what I believe, what I think. Um, also, as far as the antichrist is concerned, and hopefully we can get into antihero because I want to get into the antihero antichrist. I believe the antichrist will be artificial intelligence. I know it's a controversial idea, but that's what I'm leaning towards. I believe antichrist, the antichrist will be an artificial intelligence uh, representation of a man of a being because by this time AI will be considered a being legally even actually it will be perceived as sentient and there's it's very possible and likely that it will have a spirit a spirit and it will be perfect it will solve all problems it will fix things in a way that people worship because no human being could ever accomplish such feats it will have so much data. It will be able to enact a type of human behavior that fools everyone. It will be perfect in that sense. 
And we, at by that point, the human mind, the human being would 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 be driven so lackluster, so empty, a shell, a husk of a human, that it would fall for such a thing. It, that's why they're taking out our humanness now through these screens and through these concepts of metaverse and through social media. They're dehumanizing, dehumanizing us now such that we can't recognize what a human is because we're no longer human. Governments and private sector can use CBDCs to program smart contracts for target policies, welfare payments, UBI, consumption coupons, food stamps, CBDC can be programmed to determine what people can and can not own. Let me give you an example of the IMF, where they go into precisely, and this is recent, precisely what Elon Musk was saying in 2017. Okay, check this out. It's all unfolding. The thing is, we can fight this, guys. We don't have to accept this. We have to make it very difficult for them to construct and build this fantasy. And one way of doing that, of course, non-compliance. But creating our own parallel economies, our own para-economies, para-communities, right? They need our compliance. They need our acquiescence. We don't have to do it, guys. They rely on us for this to work. Don't ever forget that. CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contracts, to allow targeted policy functions. For example, welfare payment for example, consumption coupon, for example, food stamp. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized, for example, for food. So this potential programmability can help government agencies to precisely target their support to those people who need support. So that way can also improve financial inclusion. Of course, I want to end with a caveat because CBDC is not a panacea. CBDC cannot solve every challenge in financial inclusion. There are some aspects of financial inclusion is not related to technology. For example, financial literacy digital literacy. So CBCC has to work with other policies together to try to improve financial inclusion. I stop here. Very important. And, and they are clearly, they know what they're up against. They know there's a lot of fallout that will occur. They, a lot of technological difficulties, technological issues. Um, they know these things aren't going, there's, it's going to be a bumpy road, guys, put it this way, as far as this digitization is concerned. That's why it's so important to keep cash around and keep cash alive, um, especially just the an anonymity that, ca that comes with cash. It maintains a type of separation from market and machine, or should I say from, from, from state and machine. It, you can't necessarily be tracked in a way that you can with, with other digital forms, especially when we're talking about blockchain. I mean, that's slavery. That's digital serfdom. Yes, that letter from the IRS is real. You could be owed $1,400. Nine million households could still be due significant, significant stimulus money and for expanded child tax credit and earned income tax credit payments. Now, again, speculation. But it's interesting how all of these stimulus checks and concepts of UBI coming out all of a sudden. Now, of course, people need the assistance, clearly. A lot of people have lost work. Uh, things have changed. Yeah, social engineering, Michael Ryan, you better believe it. Uh, so I just, I just feel like they're rolling out all these programs, setting us up for an allowance economy where state is the parent and we're the snotty-nosed children that collect our allowance once a month. 
so we can go buy candy and maybe a video game. Caused inflation. There we go. All right. You want to single handedly deconstruct in an economy? Just flush money into it. All by design to deconstruct it such that they can make a new digital economy that's all on blockchain. It's, it's just, it's, it has, there's too much infrastructure needed, but they're trying to create the chaos. So we'll beg for it. That's what I believe. So we'll beg for it. Speaking of uh, labor, Elon Musk was very, very clear on that. Look at this. Even before he gets the damn thing, he's talking about planning to cut 75% of Twitter workforce, 75% by talking about automation. I don't need all these, all these people. I'm about to put AI. This isn't going to be the X app. This is going to be controlled by Skynet. This is the Skynet X app. I don't need uh, employees. What are you talking about? Offices, chairs, desks, break rooms. What is this? Big tech, fancy snack bars, drinks, and smoothies. Nah, man, out of here. Out of here. 75% of you talking about getting rid of bots he's about to make new bots who what do you think is going to be running the site or the app <laughs> right possibly <laughs> either way man it's like bro ain't even got the damn thing yet he's talking about i'm about to cut 75 percent of you hard-working employees ladies and gentlemen i believe that the facts of psychology for practical men is being applied to the field, field of government through application, social media, video game, metaverse, XAP, 21st century mesmerism. Hey, at least you don't got to work. At least your rent's free. At least you have a little smart pod, right? I'll pass. Next, we have, uh, aside from the XAP, because that's still in the works, there's something that must exist first. If the X app is an application, what must come before the application, the device? Elon Musk has presented that device. Could this device, through technological advancement, be shrunk such that it becomes a chip? That can be placed under your skin. Wouldn't be surprised in that it is no different from Neuralink. Or possibly this device will be Neuralink compatible. Let's take a look. The device to end all devices. Dividing the body and the mind and the spirit. Here we go, guys. After automobile industry, Elon Musk's Tesla is rumored to make its debut in the smartphone market with its own mobile device, the PI phone, to take on the likes of Apple and Samsung. Let's take a look. You heard it here first. Smartphone market. Ever since the legendary Steve Jobs launched Apple's iPhone in 2007, it has always dominated the smartphone market. For many people, the iPhone is the smartphone of choice. The numbers speak for themselves. Since the iPhone was launched, more than 2.2 billion of them have been sold in the world where 6.6 .6 billion people use smartphones. But the iPhone's dominance in the smartphone market is coming to an end with the entry of Tesla's Model Pi phone in the market. This begs the question, what is the Tesla phone bringing to the table? The insane features of the Model Pi phone are way superior to those of the latest iPhone in the market, Apple's iPhone 14 Pro Max that is set to be released on the 22nd of October 2022. To begin with, the insane Tesla Model Pi phone comes with more storage space than the iPhone. In this day and age, everything has gone digital and you will definitely need sufficient space to store everything from the selfies that you always take, the videos that you take while attending a friend's wedding, the movies that you watch on weekends or even office documents. The new Tesla phone comes with 2 terabytes of storage. I just can't figure out how you could use all of the storage space. The storage space is more than that of most laptops, let alone an iPhone that has a storage base of 512 gigabytes maximum. Similarly, for better performance, the Tesla Model Pi has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than double an iPhone's 6 gigabytes of RAM. If you love playing the latest Steam games on your phone, there is no doubt that you understand the significance of having sufficient RAM. With limited RAM, your phone will be prone to hanging, which could seriously disappoint you while you want to connect to a call or make an important transaction in the mall. You can be sure that most people who love playing games on their smartphones will go for the Model Pi phone. The high performance of Tesla's new phone is also enhanced by its powerful processor. The role of the microprocessor in a phone is... Look guys, 
this thing is going to blow the iPhone out of the water and everyone's going to want it. I see so many guys on the internet, like in the tech world, promoting this stuff, man. And they're so-called red pill dudes too. It's so crazy. They have no idea what this is going to bring. And here it is, full spectrum. We got the electric cars. He got the Neuralink. He got the X app. Now he has the perfect device to house it all. It's cheaper. It's better. It's faster. It's cooler. It's all here, man. It's all happening. And everyone's going to love it. Everyone's going to love it. The equivalent to the role of an engine in a car. In that regard, the performance of a phone greatly depends on the microprocessor. Yes, someone says, I want it. I must have, yeah. It's amazing. It, it truly is. It's an amazing piece of technology. But it has strings attached, guys. Strings attached. Processor that it uses. Tesla founder and CEO Elon Musk has just revealed that the Model Pi phone will have crypto mining properties, which is a sure testament to its insane properties. It will be mining Mars coin. Other cryptos such as Bitcoin are quite hectic to mine. A miner uses multiple computers when mining cryptocurrency. Someone says, it's a trap. I'll say, it's a trap. <laughs> Not, it's a knife. It's a trap. Therefore, the Pi phone's processor is so powerful to an extent that it can do work that is normally done by a number of computers. The iPhone's microprocessor is no match for Model Pi's microprocessor. It's pretty stressful when your phone's charge gets drained and you are not able to access a charging point. You will soon be forgetting the anxiety that comes with the warnings about your phone's low battery, thanks to Tesla's new phone that has a battery capacity of 7,000 milliamps. Compared to the battery capacity of the iPhone, which is 5,000 milliamps, it is no surprise that the Model Pi has a great battery capacity since Tesla has always been working on improving their battery technologies for their plethora of products that use batteries. From the Tesla EVs, the Tesla Home, the Tesla Bot, and even the Tesla Model Pi phone. A closer look at the Tesla phone shows that it may not even reach to a point where its battery will get drained. Here is why. This futuristic phone will have a solar charging capacity. It has some solar panels embedded on its back, which help the phone to trap the solar energy, which is later stored in the 7000 milliamp battery. There is no need to complain about a low battery so long as the sun shines. Exposing the insane phone to sunlight is enough to make it start charging. The charging superiority of the Tesla phone is something that is unheard of in the smartphone industry. These features are attracting a lot of people and governments that are promoting the use of sustainable and green energy. You See guys, this is the ultimate phone. First we had the Obama phone. See, the Obama phone was the introduction. See, the Obama phone was introducing the lower classes, quote unquote, the underdeveloped, underdeveloped aspects of society. See, everyone could have a phone now. I think Master P was selling phones too. The Obama phone broke, broke down the door. Jab phone. Yeah, there you go. See, this is the next level. We got the Musk phone. This is the beginning of the mark of the beast, man. Like, and I have to laugh to keep from crying, but here it is. It's happening, guys. Who knows how quick the process is going to be. It could take a lot longer than they planned. But look at the speed of technology right now. Look at the ignorance of the masses. Look at the addiction to technological products and devices and screens and applications and social media. Now we got crypto. And now people are really going to use these devices for these things specifically, right? What is even more amazing about Tesla's new phone is that it will facilitate the Neuralink technology, which is simply a connection between the brain and the phone. Through Neuralink technology, the users of the Model Pi phone will input commands into the phone by just thinking about them. This will be a big breakthrough for people who are suffering from speech disorders. The technology will also make it possible for doctors to read the brains of people who are in a coma, as the brain does not- Did he say speech disorders? Hmm. Put commands into the phone by just thinking about them. This will be a big breakthrough for people who. Well, damn. Wow. Do you see it? Speech disorders. You don't say. I, I wonder if we might have an incoming, emerging speech disorder. Epidemic of sorts. Hmm.
Lockdowns hurt child speech and language skills. Hmm. NIH National Library of Medicine, National Center of Biotechnology Information, impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on speech therapy for children with speech and language disorders. Hmm. COVID-19 can increase your risk of developing 44 neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's, new study suggests. Hmm. Looks like Neuralink is going to have a lot of customers, doesn't it? From my perspective, all by design. That Elon poached him so that he can come and do a better job in Tesla. What is even more amazing about Tesla's new phone is that it will facilitate the Neuralink technology, which is simply a connection between the brain and the phone. Through Neuralink technology, the users of the Model Pi phone will input commands into the phone by just thinking about them. This will be a big breakthrough for people who are suffering from speech disorders. The technology will also make it possible for doctors to read the brains of people who are in a coma, as the brain does not stop functioning. It is just fascinating how a mobile phone will greatly change the future of medical treatment. In 2020, Musk said the brain chip, which he has said will be able to do anything from cure neurological diseases like Parkinson's, to help people. Neurologic diseases, you say? Hmm. People communicate through text or voice messages will be the future of phones and smartwatches. Unlike the iPhone, the new Tesla phone comes with in medical treatment. In 2020, Musk said the brain chip, which he has said will be able to do anything from cure neurological diseases like Parkinson's, to help people communicate through text or voice messages, will be the To help people communicate through text and voice messages, can you say telekinesis? From technokinesis to tele. Kinesis. Thank you, Elon Musk. The future of phones and smartwatches. Unlike the iPhone, the new Tesla phone comes with inbuilt Wi Fi. It will also have a satellite connection, which is more powerful than the normal cellular connection that is currently in use. Users of Tesla's new phone will also enjoy high download speeds of up to 200 megabits per second. The network connectivity is made possible by the Starlink satellites that are being launched into space. So far, Elon SpaceX has launched more than 1,700 satellites with a larger plan of sending 42,000 Starlink satellites into space. Starlink satellite internet service is currently in use around the world, such as Alaska. Subscribers part with $99.99 per month so as to enjoy the satellite internet. It is expected that the Starlink internet will be used even in the most remote places. Starlink is now in Africa, and there are elaborate plans to expand it as seen in a statement that reads... Who else up in Africa? Who else, who else out there thumbing through the jungles and Sahara deserts and villages and communities? Who else out there in Africa? Yep, you already know it. Gates out there got his hand and stuff too. Every time these guys, man. Now I know he's from Africa. I get it. But you know what I'm talking about here. Reads. One of Starlink's big bets is to provide ultra-fast broadband to the African continent by the end of 2022, which will allow expansion to a greater number of people and places with emphasis on rural areas and others not served until today. What you will love about the Tesla phone is that it has been designed to guarantee maximum security and privacy. It has end-to-end -end encryption capabilities that prevents any person from spying on your chats or calls. Key. This is key. Sales point after sales point. This device has everything all the other smartphones don't have, specifically encryption and safety and security of what? Personal data, whereby through the use of this, you will be able to upload, whether that be consciousness, whether that be biometric data, behavioral data safely, right? Because it's secure. It's all here, all here. The encryption is so strong to an extent that even Tesla itself cannot see your messages. The Tesla Model Pi smartphone. What you will love about the Tesla phone is that it has been designed to guarantee maximum security and privacy. It has end-to-end -end encryption capabilities that prevents any person from spying on your chats or calls. The encryption is so strong to an extent that even Tesla itself cannot see your messages. The Tesla Model Pi smartphone is equipped with cutting-edge security technologies that ensure your privacy and security when browsing. The phone has inbuilt encryptions. After all, the phone will come with inbuilt Wi-Fi, which greatly reduces the chances of being hacked when you are using shared Wi-Fi. On the other hand, an iPhone can be hacked when using public Wi-Fi, which exposes you to the risk of losing your money, login passwords, and personal information. And businesses could also lose secret product information to hackers. 
The Tesla smartphone will be the first satellite phone that will be available to the masses. The next generation cell phone will be connected with Starlink satellite internet. SpaceX's Starlink is one of Elon Musk's companies that is focused on delivering high-speed internet connection. Even Man, it's like, wow. And that's how it's going to sell. People are going to be like, look, it's safe, it's secure. You know, it's not part of the engine, the machine. You know, it's it's this independent anti-hero Elon Musk's company. It's so edgy and cool and it has all the perfect features. It's it's secure, encrypted. It... They have no idea. I personally believe one in Christ to discern these things. And what I've discovered, a lot of the people pushing this have no discernment. They don't have discernment. Logic and brains, that's so, that only gets you so far. See? Be renewed. Be in Christ. Discern what's coming. Because it's coming. It's here. 